You know, Sarah, that I, I don't believe that we're going to be able to see the tightening cycle that I think is being telegraphed by the Fed. Uh, I think that um, when you look at, at the amount of on-balance sheet obligations we have as, as a sovereign and a, in the corporate sector, um, I don't think that the, that the delta, the rate of change from, from the lows to where people, let's say Wall Street economists are saying the neutral rate is, I, I don't think we get there. As you've already seen, the forward market's already priced this in and, and we already have an inverted curve. So I, I think that the, the chance of a shallow recession for the U.S. in the next 12 months is pretty high. Uh, but I, I don't expect it to be uh, too deep, given all the inputs today. So then w would you be a buyer of stocks on that view? You know, I, I think not yet. I think that you're going to see uh, things go from bad to worse in the Ukraine uh, with Putin. And I think you're going to see China move on Taiwan uh, or invade Taiwan in the next 18 months. So I would I would just sit on the sidelines for a while or, or uh, you know, I guess if what I'm looking to do is protect my portfolio, um, I sell all the Chinese stocks. Uh, if I was institutionally allocated, I would I would remove all of my investments from China. What Putin just taught us is that entire countries should be avoided if they're being run by dis despotic uh, autocrats. But that's not new for you. you. You've felt that way for a long time, and you've even bet against China in your, in your years in, in hedge fund world, right? Against the currency, right. against the Hong Kong dollar. So you've had this view for a really long time. Some people think... China is even appealing now because it's going to have to ease a lot, given it's dealing with this COVID lockdown. Sure. I bet those same people were long Russia before Putin invaded. I think it's important to note that the, the global norms and the, quote, some peoples of the world were institutionally allocated regardless of, uh, let's say, the underlying factors of, of each investment. So I would say that, that if everyone, institutional investors, investments in Russia just got taken to zero, uh, now they're kind of on the knife's edge with China. So while, while I've shared that, I, I've, I've had that view for a long time. I think uh, I think that in the end, we're going to end up being right about this. You, you think the U.S. will go through sanctions in a way that it has done for Russia with China if it invades Taiwan? It's a much bigger economy. We're much closer linked. It it's a lot, seems a lot more complicated to do. Yeah, I kind of, I, I don't think that the size of the economy dictates the... Uh, the response for a, uh, um, let's just say, a merciless killing in another country. So, I, yes, I think that the unthinkable has become at least a, a mainstream thought. And uh, if you're a fiduciary, you better be uh, worried about your, your allocation, uh, given uh, all of the inputs today. I, I, I think it's indefensible to be, to be long anything in China. But we didn't even do sanctions. U.S. didn't even do secondary sanctions on China for dealing with Russia and still buying its oil and protecting its financial system, essentially. Yeah, you're right. I mean, every day we don't sanction Russia's energy sector, we give Putin at least $800 million a day. Uh, so the West continues to fund the, the Russian killing machine. And at some point in time, Wall Street's going to at least put its greed aside and realize that there are uh, better national security decisions to be made. And, and maybe that requires leadership at the top of the West. But I think at some point in time, uh, we've got to cut the blood flow off to the tumor.